المتحدة الأمريكية. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I am honored to be in the timeless city of Cairo and to be hosted by two remarkable institutions. I've come here to Cairo to seek a new beginning between the United States and Muslims around the world. One based on mutual interest and mutual respect. And one based upon the truth that America and Islam are not exclusive and need not be in competition. Instead, they overlap and share common principles. Principles of justice and progress, tolerance and the dignity of all human beings. As the Holy Quran tells us, be conscious of God and speak always the truth. My father came from a Kenyan family that includes generations of Muslims. As a boy, I spent several years in Indonesia and heard the call of the Azan at the break of dawn and at the fall of dusk. As a young man, I worked in Chicago communities where many found dignity and peace in their Muslim faith. As a student of history, I also know civilization's debt to Islam. It was Islam at places like Uluzan that carried the light of learning through so many centuries, paving the way for Europe's renaissance and enlightenment. It was innovation in Muslim communities that developed the order of algebra, our magnetic compass and tools of navigation, our mastery of pens and printing, our understanding of how disease spreads and how it can be healed. Islamic culture has given us majestic arches and soaring spires, timeless poetry and cherished music, elegant calligraphy and places of peaceful con contemplation. And throughout history, Islam has demonstrated through words and deeds the possibilities of religious tolerance and racial equality. I also know that Islam has always been a part of America's story. The first nation to recognize my country was Morocco. From signing the Treaty of Tripoli in 1796, our second president, John Adams, wrote, the United States has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. Since our founding, American Muslims have enriched the United States. They have fought in our wars, they have served in our government, they have stood for civil rights, they have started businesses, they have taught at our universities, they've excelled in our sports arenas, they've won Nobel Prizes, built our tallest building, and lit the Olympic torch. When the first Muslim American was recently elected to Congress, he took the oath to defend our Constitution using the same Holy Quran that one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, kept in his personal library. So I have known Islam on three continents before coming to the region where it was first revealed. That experience guides my conviction that partnership between America and Islam must be based on what Islam is, not what it isn't. And I consider it part of my responsibility as President of the United States to fight against negative stereotypes of Islam wherever they appear.
7 million American Muslims in our country today who, by the way, enjoy incomes and educational levels that are higher than the American average. That is why there is a mosque in every state in our union and over 1,200 mosques within our borders. That's why the United States government has gone to court to protect the right of women and girls to wear the hijab and to punish those who would deny it. So let there be no doubt. Let there be no doubt. Islam is a part of America. And I believe that America holds within her the truth that regardless of race, religion, or station in life, all of us share common aspirations. To live in peace and security. To get an education and to work with dignity. To love our families, our communities, and our God. These things we share. This is the hope of all humanity.